and welcome to this week's Fix of Life Support. The only lifestyle program that has a quick fix for all the problems you need fixed quick. That's right, and it's great to be here for you tonight. I'm Life Support's modern woman Sigourney, and tonight I'll be showing all you ladies a fun and practical way to modify your genes and the safest way to enjoy a full sex life today. I'm Todd, and I do all my own stunts, and if you take a tip from me, you'll be able to too. Tonight, I'll be letting you in on a way to keep your million dollar view and showing you the solution to a neighbour's constantly barking dog. Life Support's resident doctor, Rudy Head, and this week I have some invaluable advice, including preventative techniques for dealing with domestic violence and some advice for all you Catholic men. I'm Penny, and I'll be showing all you cyber kids how to actually make money off the internet. Jeez, are you sure we'll fit all that in? Well, not if we hang about like this, so why don't we get right to it? When men are looking to get married, they're often warned to look at a girl's mother if they want to know what she'll look like in 30 years' time. It's sensible advice for the man. But as a modern woman whose mother isn't terribly photogenic, it's frightening to know that you may be judged by your family photographs. Fortunately, your genetic heritage can be easily covered up with the help of some modern technology. Simply scan your family photographs. Then scan photographs of a supermodel who's aged gracefully. Someone like Isabella Rossellini or Deborah Hutton. Today, I'm using Saskia. Such good bone structure. Then, simply paste her beautiful image on top of your real mama in your family photographs. And that's me at school. Uh -huh. And that's my mum. Wow. Your mother's really beautiful. Yes, the women in our family seem to grow more beautiful as they get older. Once you've pulled it off, you just have to cover yourself so you don't get caught. She would have loved to have met you. Unfortunately, she's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry. You can meet my stepmother. She's the one I call mum now. And that's all there is to it. A fun and easy way to maximise your chances by modifying your genes. I love pets, especially dogs. But if the dog next door doesn't stop barking, it can drive you absolutely crazy. Now, in the old days, you just get a lamb chop, soak it in DDT and throw it over the back fence, barking stops. But in these snobby modern times, dogs are trained to eat pedigree pet products and they'll just turn their nose up at a chop covered in dead flies that smells a bit funny. So, why not take a more subtle and civilised approach to the problem of the barking dog and take it up with your neighbours directly? That's right. Just invite them over to chat about their dog and put on a nice barbie to talk it over. It's uh, almost ready. So, here's the important part. Make sure they get two poison chops. Now, you don't want to end up in jail. So, be conservative with your poison giving them just enough to send them to hospital with the worst case of Barbie belly they've ever had. Here you go! Doesn't that look tops? With the neighbours out of the way for a day or so, the dog will be left on its own. Time for you to play the good neighbour and feed the hungry hound with a huge bowl of yummy milk mixed with a little bubble bath mixture. And then all that's left to do is a concerned and frantic call to the cops and the RSPCA, and in under an hour, your dog problem will be a thing of the past. Hello, is that the RSPCA? Geez, uh, you blokes have a tough job. Oh, ta. And there you have it. You've gotten rid of the dog, but you're still considered a good neighbour. And when they come home, you gently break the news and show them the RSPCA report. Now, I reckon that's a pretty top tip. Oh, I was a Dr. Rudy here. Are you gay? Are you Catholic? Do you want to receive communion? Well, if the answer to those three questions is yes, then you're in trouble because the Catholic Church does not condone homosexuality. 
I know it might be hard to believe since the rank and file are sending out mixed messages, especially to children, but that's the official position. So today, I'm going to show you gay Catholics how to beat the system and receive communion in your preferred place of worship. All you have to do is remove your rainbow sash. That's all there is to it. Unless you have armor puffed or tattooed on your forehead, they'll never pick you because the average person has really bad gaydar, which is why all those multimedia personalities manage to stay so long in the closet. What are you waiting for? Get in there and drink Christ's blood alongside the heterosexual faithful. And there you have it, a simple solution if you are determined to join a club that doesn't want you as a member. Bye now. If those guys have been playing hide the sausage with all those boys all these years and now it's just come out in the open, I don't see why they can't let people take communion that are still playing hide the sausage with each other. Everyone has rules and regulations that have to be followed and so homosexuals have to respect that, I think, and just do something else. Uh, but if they don't say they're homosexuals, then no one would know. My old flatmate's a fag and he doesn't really... Like, he's half Jewish, he's Christian Catholic and he just doesn't believe any of it anyway. It's all, I think religion's a load of shit, so it doesn't really matter either way. <laughs> Wasn't that a wonderfully simple approach to a difficult situation? And speaking of religion, Penny, what's this? Did you join a cult this week? Oh, this? No, I just haven't done a wash yet. It was the only thing I could find that was clean. Really? Well, the only thing appropriate anyway. But what about this? That's such a nice outfit you're wearing today. Oh, do you like this, Penny? I'll let you in on a little secret. I bought it on the internet. Sigourney surfing the net? Penny, I'm a modern woman. We all surf. The internet has brought untold benefits to women all over the world. I mean, you can shop Rodeo Drive from any room in the house. Oh, yeah, I'm totally into the net. In fact, here's something for netheads right now. Hey, tonight, I'm going to show you all how to mine a rich vein of dot-com gold. Internet pedophiles. You see, these pederasts scour chat rooms looking for potential victims, then lure them into unsafe situations by corrupting a kiddie's sense of judgement with hardcore pornography and expensive gifts. Gold. So, to start, the first thing you have to do is set up your own homepage. I've called mine Penny's Playhouse. I've made sure it features poor spelling, a picture of me as a 12-year-old netball player and a banal online diary about the minutiae of school, the relative merits of every posing boy band and how I'm so mature and want some older friends. Then, to meet your victim, just go into any chat room on the net and imitate a precocious 12-year-old. Nicky Webster's a pretty good guide. And if some sicko out there has doubts about your credentials, just refer them to your website. In no time at all, you'll have a bunch of unsuitable suitors emailing you every day. Toy with them for a bit. You don't want to seem easy or too fickle. Then when they make the move, you strike. Ah, this looks promising. Subject, true love. I think about you all the time. Can I meet you? I will only meet you if you really love me. My parents don't love me. They won't buy me a PlayStation 2. How will I know if you love me? He'll catch on pretty quickly. Just make sure you get them to send your gifts care of a friend's house because you don't want your parents to discover your secret love. And in no time, you'll have another PlayStation to add to the collection. More often than not, they arrive with one of these hardcore porn DVDs. And that's all there is to it. Now it's time to sell your gifts. I use either eBay or the Trading Post online. Last week, I sold an Xbox, a Nintendo and two PlayStations for a profit of just over a thousand bucks. And I have a substantial porn library, which is the envy of all my friends. Unfortunately, I also have a collection of pictures of fat, naked men in Groucho Marx disguises. Who knows? They could come in handy if I'm ever doing business with the federal court. See ya. So you've finally done it. 
You've taken out a whopping huge mortgage and bought the house of your dreams. And isn't it just perfect? I mean, look at that view. It's worth a million bucks alone. But now your only problem is how can you make sure that the view you just forked out for won't get built out? Well, don't worry. It's dead simple. All you need to do is inform the Preservation Society that the scrubland in front of your house is an Aboriginal burial ground. Then start a campaign to have it preserved as a mark of respect. Now, it's best to do this after a torrential downpour, something intense enough to naturally unearth your find. Then, all you need is some human bones, easily picked up on a Tasmanian bushwalk, and a few primitive stone tools that you've banged together in your shed. And, hey presto, development opportunity to very sacred site. Then campaign for the preservation of the site and get as many local residents involved as possible. Hi, just like that. Now this shouldn't be too difficult at all. These type of people love to think they're conserving culture or helping the arts. I mean, you're really doing them a favour because the next time they're challenged about what they're doing for the Aboriginal community, they can cite the preservation of this site. It's much easier to care about dead Aboriginals than the living ones. And that's all there is to it. You get to keep the view that's rightfully yours whilst establishing yourself as someone who cares in the community. Another terrific tip for those at the top. Every week, I'm inundated with letters from men asking how to seduce the ladies. Nikolai from Sundry writes, how do I get a woman from the bar to the bedroom? The fact of the matter is, is that women actually quite like sex. Indeed, sometimes they are gagging for it. But the thing that will stop women from having sex with you is if they think you are a dog. The problem is, most women think that most men are dogs. How's it? And these decisions are made in a split second. So what you need to do is to avoid revealing the true nature of yourself. And the best way to do that is to keep your mouth shut. Don't say anything. It could be the way you boast about your job, or it could be your admission that you catch the bus to work, or it could be your accent. It only takes one piece of information for a woman to write you off for good. I love my job, I know. Now, the best way to avoid speaking is to go somewhere loud with someone loud. Take your most talkative mate, then when you meet a woman, let him hog the conversation, whilst you make loads of eye contact. I know you think internet technology or IT is uh, boring. Because you're silent, she'll assume that you're much more interesting than you actually are, and she will eventually try to speak to you. You're a quiet one. But you could still ruin everything by speaking, so don't. Kiss her instead. Then at the end of the night, let the awkward, drawn-out silence force a suggestion from her. I'm gonna go home. Do you want to share a cab? That's all that is to it. Of course, once you get her back to her place, you will have to say a couple of things. But if things go well, you should be able to restrict yourself to yes, more, and oh my god. No, my man's got to have some balls. When I see a strong and silent guy, I, it, it, it attracts me, but at the same time scares me. you got to let them know what you are, otherwise... You know, you could be strong and silent and be a psychotic murderer. Seems Dr Rudy's really helping out all you Aussie men with your relationships this year. And I've got to agree with him. I mean, sometimes the less said the better. Don't you reckon? Todd. Oh, all right. I see, Todd. Very good. Very mysterious. Very alluring. It's not working, you know. I'm not in the least bit interested. <sighs> Look, we're not going to waste everyone's time with this. Let's check out the next segment. God, you're a dork, Todd. Mm -hmm. 
Whenever someone has been in a near-fatal accident, they always say that their brush with death gave them a new lease on life. So, if you're in a relationship that's going stale, why not liven it up by nearly killing him? All you have to do is drain the brake fluid from his car. Penny showed me how to do this. Then, sit back and wait for the police to call with news that your loved one is in hospital. That was quick. Hello? Is he okay? Oh, thank God. Oh, Sigourney. All I could think about was how much I love you. That's wonderful. And as, as soon as I get out of here, let's get married. Okay. Bye. Well, that went better than expected. Normally, I like to collect an engagement ring with a proposal, but he gave me a blank check. And I guess that's better anyway. That's all there is to it. It's high risk for high return. Sure, it may go terribly wrong, but if he isn't going to commit to you, you might as well get rid of him anyway. Well, young Penny, it's time for us once again to dive into the mailbag and help out another average Australian. And what do you have for us tonight, Dr Rudy? Well, I have a letter addressed to you. It's from Renee in Townsville. She goes on to say, Over the past two years, I've been stalked by my ex-boyfriend. He ignores restraining orders and now I'm really starting to fear for my safety. Is there anything I can do? Please help. My word. Well, Renee, the solution is really simple. All you have to do is kill your ex-boyfriend. Hmm, you're saying the solution is murder? No, I'm saying the solution is manslaughter. You see, if you kill someone but you didn't mean to do it, then you'll only be convicted of manslaughter. And personally, I think it's ridiculous. I mean, if you're so careless that you can accidentally kill a perfectly innocent person, well, lethally clumsy people shouldn't be allowed on the streets. Whereas in a planned murder, the victim usually has it coming. So in a way, you're doing a community service. Be that as it may, young lady, the law is the law. Exactly. That's why if you want to knock someone off, you have to make it look like an accident. Which is easy enough, especially if you drive your own car. You see, all you have to do is run down your intended victim in your car and then loudly and hysterically declare, Oh my God! I didn't mean to do that! I must say, I find that hard to believe. Oh no, you'll totally get off. Easy. For vehicular manslaughter, you get as little as a 12-month suspended sentence. So there you go, Renee. Give that a go. Are you sure about this, Penny? I don't think a court or a person in the world would believe you. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr Rudy. I didn't mean to do that. Don't worry about it. Not your fault. Just an accident. Anyway, Penny, I think it's time we moved on from such morbid topics. Let's do that by looking at this. You know, a recent study has found that parents with four-wheel drives run a higher risk of reversing over their children. The height of vehicles like this result in poor visibility, especially when backing out of driveways. And if you do happen to run over and cripple one of your kiddies, well, do you really want to be living in the burbs with 2.5 kids? Probably not. So to avoid becoming a statistic, I'm going to show you a top way to protect those little people from your people mover. Every time you want to take the four-wheel drive out, just gather the kids together. Then, strap a tape recorder to each of them. Now, press play, and the tape of a truck reversing will let you know the kids are about. And that's all there is to it. So now, if you don't see anything in your mirrors, let them warn you when you're reversing. Oh, get out of there, you little rascal. Hi. You know, having sex with a stranger is really fun. Being thrust up against the wall of the men's toilets for a two-minute slammer, or finding the perfect public place for some moonlight mauling, it really is the stuff of dreams. But in reality, it's not without its complications for the modern woman. One, he leaves and then never calls you back again. Two, 
he never leaves and then when he finally does, he never stops calling you. Or three, you wake up to discover you've got a million diseases and a bun in the reluctant oven. But don't worry, because in these modern times of body and soul, I found the perfect solution to the dangers of anonymous sex. Simply get yourself a personal trainer, because as I'm about to demonstrate, you can enjoy all the thrills of hardcore intimacy without the weirdness and worry. Now, Andre here says that this exercise is working my butt, my abs and my lower back. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm getting worked all over. I'm clamped to one of the buffest bodies I've ever seen. And in terms of erotic content, well, I'm in a public place and I'm with a hot stranger. Hey, Andre, can we do that other thing now? This exercise is called the thigh stretcher. But if you close your eyes, well, enough said. So take a leaf out of my book and get yourself a personal trainer today. They're listed at your local gym and in your local papers. And the great thing is their first consultation is usually free, so you can buy a stretch away around town without paying a cent and without the burden of regret, disease and pregnancy. And let's face it, at one hour a session, that's ten times longer than any other man in town. Hey, Andre, you want to get a frappe later? Gee, Sigourney, what a great idea. Does it really work? Oh, Penny, all I can say is yes, yes, yes. I've always had an aversion to joining the health and fitness fraternity. But bugger it, I'm getting a personal trainer tomorrow. Well done, Penny. You're never too young to start a good exercise regime. That's right. Well, I'm lost for words because here we are at the end of another show. And I hope we've made your lives that little more bearable. Oh, I'm sure we have. Hey, Todd, you're being awfully quiet tonight. You're a tool, Todd. Speaking of tools, make sure you join us next week because we'll be back, same time, same channel. Until then, why not preserve some lemons? Experiment with raffia. And in the meantime, you little battlers keep fighting the good fight, you hear? And remember, the only reason we're in here is because you're out there. Good, good night, night, Australia. Australia.